Okay, instead of doing my typical review where I break down the roller coaster into different categories, I just want to talk about how amazing Maverick is. As far as I'm concerned, Maverick is the MVP of Cedar Point. Typically, everybody runs to Steel Vengeance, and then they'll head over to Maverick once they get their one ride on Steel Vengeance, but honestly, I think you're doing it wrong. Steel Vengeance might be considered the king, or whatever you want to call it, but Maverick is just so amazing and delivers on so many different levels in ways that Steel Vengeance does not. Hmm. Hmm. No. Um. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. But this isn't a comparison video. I'm not here to talk about why Maverick is better than Steel Vengeance or why Steel Vengeance is better than Maverick. I just want to talk about Maverick and how great of a roller coaster it is. During my recent three day trip to Cedar Point, I was very surprised how efficient this roller coaster was operating. In fact, it never went down during the entire three days that I was there. That is something that I can't say about Steel Vengeance or even Millennium Force. Both roller coasters were really sketchy during those three days. In fact, I think Steel Vengeance was down more than it actually was operating. And with Millennium Force, it kind of kept breaking down randomly throughout the day. They were running two trains, and then they put on a third train, then they took it off, and then they had one train, and it just kept going on and on, and then the ride would be down. But that was never the case with Maverick. The ride operators, they were doing an excellent job sending the trains. In fact, they were actually dispatching a train about every 45 seconds. I'll be discussing the operations a little bit more in depth in a later video when I talk about the operations at Cedar Point, but just know that the Maverick team was doing a fantastic job. Okay, so I know that most of you who are watching this video have probably ridden Maverick because, well, I mean, it's a pretty popular roller coaster at a pretty popular park. But regardless, let's just talk about all the amazing things that this coaster pulls off. Okay, the first thing, the most obvious, is the launches. The first launch, though not very strong or forceful, it still has a little kick to it. In fact, I actually kind of like it. I like how you just creep up closer to it, waiting for it to just kick in, and then wham, there you go, and you're on your way up to the top of the first drop. Basically, this first launch introduces you to what this roller coaster is all about, and that's being unpredictable. So, after that first launch, the roller coaster immediately dives into a 100 foot 90 degree plummet. And I gotta be honest, this is a very underrated first drop. Not only does it deliver some solid ejector airtime for those riding in the back, but deliver some strong positive forces as you're pulling out of the maneuver. In fact, every single time that I would ride Maverick, I would gray out during this portion of the ride. During my three day visit, every time that I rode this roller coaster after completing that first drop, I was just laughing. My adrenaline is pumping and I'm ready to experience the rest of the ride. So after performing a couple rapid sharp turns, the roller coaster comes to its next airtime moment, a solid ejector airtime hill. This airtime hill competes with almost anything that Steel Vengeance can throw at you. Okay, so the next part of the ride some might consider to be the most boring part, but honestly, I really love the horseshoe roll. It's not that forceful, but delivers some nice weightlessness, and I love how it interacts with that fountain that you're wrapping around. Okay, this is when things really start to heat up. The ride does a turn, and then it enters right into a tunnel. The train slows down a little bit, you see some flashing lights from railroad crossing signs, and next thing you know it, you're launching up to 70 miles per hour. The ride does this snappy turn to the left that sends you right up into, well, you'd be surprised, but it's some trim brakes. Okay, so I know a lot of you do not like these trim brakes, but call me weird, I actually enjoy this part of the ride. It really plays on the whole theme of this roller coaster, and that's being unpredictable. So here you are traveling 70 miles per hour through this tunnel, and then it's kind of like the train realizes, hey, we're going too fast, so we gotta slow down. Honestly, it doesn't really slow you down that much, because the rest of the ride feels like you're hitting it at breakneck speeds. The rest of the ride, it's like a horse on steroids. You're hitting these fast paced turns, snappy transitions, and one final strong moment of ejector airtime as you hit a speed hill right before turning sharply into the brake run. Maverick is a powerhouse loaded with great positives, excellent ejector airtime, some laterals. This roller coaster has it all. I know I said I wasn't going to make this a comparison video with Steel Vengeance, but I just got to bring up a couple points. Steel Vengeance is a great airtime machine, but well, that's all it is. It's all airtime. And as much as I love airtime, I'm realizing that there's actually more to roller coasters than just airtime. Also, another point everybody just runs to Steel Vengeance at the beginning of the day, so the line gets super long. On top of that, the roller coaster hasn't really been that reliable. It keeps breaking down multiple times. 
Who would have thought that a multi-launching Intamin roller coaster would be more reliable than an RMC? But anyways, as you're standing around waiting for Steel Vengeance to open up in the morning, maybe it doesn't open on time, maybe it does, who knows, but then the ride breaks down, you've still been standing around, you still haven't ridden it, and it's 12 o'clock. And then there's me, over by Maverick, getting multiple rides, having the time of my life. Okay, can we talk about the restraints? Because I really want to talk about the restraints. I feel like everybody hates on them for some reason. I know that they are the soft straps and the hard straps were more hated, but I still see a lot of people saying that they're not good and that they inhibit the airtime. Well, I don't know what you're talking about because it does not inhibit the airtime. When a roller coaster is delivering strong ejector airtime like Maverick, it doesn't really matter if you're quote unquote stapled because guess what? You're still feeling like a ragdoll that's trying to be violently thrown from the ride. <laughs> now, for those who say that they like Millennium Force more than Steel Vengeance or Maverick, I say more power to you. However, again, during my three day visit, Millennium Force kept breaking down. This was supposed to be a quote unquote reliable roller coaster, but I really wasn't seeing that during my visit. So in conclusion, I guess I really don't have a conclusion just to say that Maverick is a great roller coaster and I'm really impressed how well this roller coaster has been running and the ride operators, you're doing a fantastic job. Well, this was a different kind of video that I normally don't do, but well, if you liked it, let me know in the comments. And if you didn't like it, I got more reviews coming your way. As always, please make sure you subscribe, that way you continue to get great content coming your way by Xcream Thrills.